Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Again, I want to begin by thanking the people of Connecticut for responding uh, in a, a proper fashion to what continues to be a major risk uh, facing uh, Connecticut. Uh, we are most concerned uh, about flooding uh, at this point along uh, Long Island Sound. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the nature of this storm uh, indicates that the, uh, uh, we could have a, a large amount of additional water flowing into uh, western uh, Long Island Sound. Uh, this would be akin uh, to the 92 perfect storm situation, uh, except that uh, under certain models we could be predicting uh, uh, tides uh, a foot to two feet higher uh, than we experienced in 1992. Now that, that would be at the mid-range um, of the full range uh, that we're getting from the federal government. So we are in the process uh, right now of, of uh, talking to the, or will be uh, shortly, talking to all of the communities uh, in the Lower Sound, uh, basically from um, uh, East Haven uh, down through Greenwich, uh, making sure that all uh, uh, necessary steps, including evacuations, are underway uh, in those areas in preparation of tomorrow's high tide. Um, we urge uh, travel be uh, completed, uh, any travel that needs to be completed in Connecticut uh, uh, using uh, road systems uh, be completed during the daylight hours. Uh, we anticipate uh, uh, we will start to get the uh, 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 high winds uh, beginning uh, uh, sometime after 9 p.m. Um, so uh, a, a good rule of thumb is to try to be off the road, be off the road uh, by the time that the, uh, the sun goes down. Um, we will be considering a full ban um, uh, of all non-emergency vehicles uh, uh, being imposed uh, on our highway and road systems uh, sometime uh, early in the morning. Uh, uh, Sunday morning, so be prepared uh, uh, to be ordered off the road or to be stopped. Um, uh, we uh, urge all of our citizens uh, along uh, uh, rivers, uh, streams, uh, and areas that are affected by tides uh, uh, to uh, leave uh, your area. Um, uh, again, I, uh, to put it in perspective, we're talking about um, uh, tide uh, surges uh, in excess of what was experienced in 1992, uh, one of the storms that most folks uh, living along the shore remember. You can call 211 for uh, local shelter uh, information. Um, uh, do not go near uh, downed uh, power, uh, power lines. Uh, we urge you to stay away. Um, uh, those of you who have propane tanks, um, uh, sometime uh, before nightfall, you may want to consider, uh, please consider, uh, 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 turning off those uh, propane tanks uh, for the duration uh, of the storm. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to take some questions. Governor, yesterday you were uh preparing uh, the possibility of closing the Merritt and Wilbur Cross Parkways, and now you're uh, suggesting the possibility of a full ban on all traffic. Uh, what's changed in the last 24 hours to have you planning that? Uh, uh, only, uh, only the realities of, of, of the storm uh, as they become closer uh, and as we become more sure uh, of, um, of the hit we're going to take. Now, we know we're going to be hit. Uh, we're monitoring the, the, the level of the hit uh, and, and what the implications are. It still appears that we're going to have a long period of rain. Uh, the ground is already soft. Uh, trees are probably heavier than they've been in any uh, late August in, in many, many years. So our biggest concern along the Merritt and the Wilbur Cross uh, is tree damage. Um, and I think for planning purposes, uh, please uh, complete your travel uh, before the time that uh, uh, the sun goes down. And, and at your request, President Obama declared this an emergency here. Uh, what, what does that mean in terms of um, the federal government. I, I saw uh, someone walking around here with a FEMA shirt on. I yeah. guess they're already here. Yeah, FEMA's been on, uh, uh, on site uh, uh, for over 24 hours. Uh, the request I made of the president uh, was a pre-landfall uh, uh, declaration. He has given that. Uh, that means that there are federal funds uh, to be used uh, uh, in preparation as well as uh, recovery um, uh, that are immediately available. Um, and then other steps would be taken uh, depending on the amount of damage uh, that is sustained in Connecticut uh, thereafter. Will we be moving forward with urban area evacuations? We are. Uh, well, first of all, I, I am, I am uh, pleading with uh, folks. Uh, to understand the implications of the storm uh, and to uh, remove themselves. Um, uh, we are, uh, between now and uh, uh, our next uh, update, uh, we will have conferred with all of the local communities. Uh, we'll have an update on our nursing homes uh, that are in uh, a harm's way, uh, particularly between uh, the New Haven uh, and Greenwich borders, um, and we'll uh, consider additional steps uh, in, the com in the coming few hours.
Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, if, if, if you have an option, uh, get out of harm's way. Um, uh, the tidal surge, uh, uh, we're concentrating on that uh, in that lower sound area. Let me put it this way. Why would you go on a road in the middle of a hurricane? I mean, it's like people standing on the beach in the middle of a hurricane or surfers deciding to surf in the middle of a hurricane. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so what, what, what we're communicating now with the citizens who really are responding very well to, to everything we're saying is uh, we're trying to give you a benchmark. Benchmark is complete your travel by the time uh, uh, the sun goes down. Uh, if it, it, it would be no fun. Uh, to be in the middle of 50 uh, mile an hour winds with trees coming down uh, in a, uh, a roadway, uh, whether it's a local, a state, or a highway, uh, in the middle of the storm. So a little common sense is, goes a long, long way, uh, and we're trying to give you benchmarks uh, by which to measure. Okay. Assessment at this point, how many people have gotten away from those areas, or any way to benchmark that? We, we believe uh, from, from, our, from the reports we're getting from local governments, um, uh, particularly in the lower sound area, uh, that people are, are, are heeding this call. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 we, we uh, you know, high tide tomorrow is too late for us to do an evacuation. We will not be able to evacuate people uh, in the middle of uh, uh, this tidal surge. Um, uh, so people are, will end up making conscious decisions, I believe, um, uh, uh, to put themselves in harm's way if they remain uh, in their dwellings. And, and, and let's just put this in perspective. Uh, when this tide goes out, it will be an extraordinary low tide, we believe. Uh, so drainage will, be, will happen pretty quickly. So really there's no reason to remain in a ha harm's way when, when in all of the communities uh, along Long Island Sound, lower Long Island Sound, have higher ground areas fairly closely uh, adjacent uh, to low-lying areas. Uh, we are uh, uh, concerned about uh, uh, urban uh, residents in those communities, and that's why uh, we're reaching out uh, between now and the next time we get together uh, with the leadership of all of those local communities to make sure that they are advertising uh, their local shelters. Uh, we have done, I think, a good job in the establishing shelters in all of the communities uh, sufficient uh, to house on a temporary basis any population that would seek to evacuate itself uh, from low-lying areas. Uh, we're confident we have uh, sufficient space. Um, uh, you know, we're not, we're not talking about hotels, but we're talking about safety. Um, so uh, that's where we are right now. Colonel Whitford had told us that there would be at least 200 National Guard troops up and ready by Sunday morning. Are they going to be up and ready on that area from New Haven to Greenwich? Uh, we, uh, uh, troops will be deployed throughout the state um, uh, at armories uh, for recovery efforts uh, beginning uh, as soon as uh, uh, the storm uh, begins the process of departing. Um, and uh, I'm confident we have uh, sufficient uh, uh, troops, uh, volunteers, uh, local police, uh, state police necessary to conduct um, um, uh, removals if, if, uh, uh, if people are asking for assistance. And General Martin has assured you there would be 700 ready by Monday morning? I, I want to, yes, I, I want to say that we, uh, all of our state agencies, you know, I just completed uh, uh, a meeting with about 60 representatives of, of uh, our utility companies, uh, our commissioners, uh, all of our departments. Uh, this is an extraordinary effort um, uh, going in to be, be th that is being applied to being properly prepared for any eventuality. Um, and again, you know, we can always hope uh, that the, the things that we fear don't happen, uh, but we have to prepare uh, for the things that we fear. Okay? How many communities are in mandatory evacuations right now? Uh, uh, we are asking. <laughs> I guess the easy way to say this is if you're near a river or near a stream or on Long, Long Island Sound, particularly western Long Island Sound, what are you doing home right now? Okay? Great. You know, Thank you. You became governor and we had the worst winter we had in about 100 years, and now we're having the first hurricane in about 20. Are you getting a complex about this? No, no. Uh, this, has <laughs> been, this has been an appropriate arrangement so I can see all of you on a more frequent <laughs> basis. Thank you very see much. See you at 4 o'clock.